Fast Retailing is a Japanese fast fashion company, and underneath the most famous brand is called Uniqlo, which accounts for nearly 83% of its total revenue. And recently, there is a news about this company stated that fast retailing became the most valuable fashion company in terms of market capitalization. And I still remember back in 2014, the company is still ranked behind Intidex, H&M, and Gap. And so this episode is a case study about how fast retailing becomes number one. What kind of strategies do they use? Hi everyone, welcome to the new episode of Fashion Brief. So at the beginning, I would still like to provide a brief introduction of fast retailing and what are the brands underneath. And so fast retailing is founded by Yanai Tadashi in 1963. And the most famous brands, for example, Uniqlo, GU, and also Theory, are all belongs to this fashion group. Well, personally, I bought a lot of things from Uniqlo. I'm a huge fan of this brand because they offer products with high quality and high functionality with reasonable price. The famous fashion item, including down jacket. Uniqlo T-shirt, and also they collaborate with different artists and designers. For example, the Plus J collection with Jill Sandler, the Ines de la Fresange collection, and also the former Hermes designer Christophe Lemierre. These are all the portfolio of Uniqlo. And in terms of functionality, there is Airism for summer and Heat Tech for winter. And also, there is another sub-brand which is more fashionable, called GU. They sell cheaper and also more fashion-oriented clothes. And then the third brand is called Theory. It's more premium and low-key. I think it's really similar to a brand called Arcade. Well, here comes the question: How did fast retailing become the most valuable fashion company recently? Well, first of all, I think it's because of the strategy of their store opening allocation. As we all know, that pandemic disrupted the whole economy. While some Asian countries recover quite fast in comparison to U.S. or some countries in Europe, and so it's very important to have the allocation. In Asia, instead of in the Western world. So let's take Uniqlo as an example. In total, approximately until the end of 2020, there are still 2,300 stores around the world, while 60% of the stores are located in Asia, and 40% of them located in China, namely 900 stores. And in comparison to Zara, they focus and they. Deeply rely on the Europe and U.S. market, so only 20% of the stores are located in Asia. As we've read through different kinds of reports and news, stated that, for example, China is already the biggest fashion market around the world, and so it's quite obvious that the battle around fashion industry in the fashion sector will be in Asia. And so it's very important for fast fashion brands to have the correct store allocation strategy. Upon seeing this chart, the sales at leading apparel retailers: number one is still Intex, number two H&M, and number three is fast retailing. This is in terms of sales, while in terms of market capitalization, fast retailing. Is already the number one around the world. Second of all, it's also because of COVID. Because of the pandemic, we need to stay at home. So there is this staycation trend and also work from home revolution. Little by little, for us, casual wear is more important in comparison to fashion or luxury brands. And so there is this change of consumer behavior. Of shifting towards casual wear, and so Uniqlo actually benefited from this whole COVID situation a lot because its design is driven by live wear concept. And what is live wear? 
it's actually really simple because it connects to its simple, high quality and high functionality design for everyday lives. And so meaning the clothes from Uniqlo are the necessities that we need to wear it every day. The concept life wear also goes hand in hand with sustainability, namely to create a circular future. For example, in 2020 fall winter collection, they launched a 100% recycled down jacket and also a project called Reuniculo. They recycle the unused Uniqlo clothes to the refugees. Also, they ensure their fair working environment, human rights, and also they hire disability workers in stores. Last but not least, the key to success for fast retailing is its Ariake project. It was already launched in 2018. It's a project about to transform the apparel industry into a new digital retail industry that focuses on commercialization of information. As we all know that in an era of big data, data analysis, information is key. And so fa for fast retailing, they leverage different kinds of advanced technologies to connect the brand to their warehouse, to their suppliers, manufacturers, to connect them all together and then it becomes a system. This system is a seamless supply chain. As I've mentioned before for the LifeWare concept, this project is also dedicated to sustainability and also human rights. Ariake is actually a region near by Tokyo and they want to experiment this concept firstly in Ariake and then to spread around the world. From an interview with the CEO of Fast Retailing, Yanai Sang, he mentioned that making information accessible to all our employees is one of the foundations of the Ariake project because it empowers them to use human traits like logic, judgment, and empathy to make decisions. And so from this interview, we can actually observe that the CEO's perseverance to make every information transparent and accessible, to make everything efficient. And so I would like to leverage this charge to explain how fast retailing use the information throughout the whole process in the Ariake project. And so actually from the very beginning phase, the product development phase, since 2018, they had a partnership with Google Cloud to translate customer desires into products and service, which make it faster and preciser. For the second phase, production, Uniqlo actually worked with a synthetic manufacturer called Tore. This manufacturer helps Uniqlo to refine different kinds of functional materials such as heat tech, block tech, and also the light down jackets. The third phase, logistics. They partnered with Daifuku, the logistic company. They try to revolutionize the logistic process. Since every product of Uniqlo has a IC tag, from unloading and sorting to extracting products, and also inspection, is carried out almost entirely by automation. The last phase, the selling phase, they still utilize the information they gathered from their inventory to analyze whether some products are too much or some products are too less that needs to be manufactured to have the precise amount of number. And so as we can see that this charge, the whole process is based on information. They want to utilize the information to make the precise decision in this fast and competitive environment. That's their key to success in terms of production and automation. And when it comes to information, digitalization is also important for fast retailing. As we can see from this chart, for e-commerce sales in 2020, it skyrocketed to 313.7 billion Japanese yen. And so actually e-commerce sales were boosted by the change of consumer behavior brought by COVID-19. But actually the rise of online shopping is mainly because consumers 
chose the most convenient way for them to shop. And that's why for fast retailing, stores are as important as e-commerce. They are trying to find the synergy between e-commerce and the brick and mortar stores. And actually in 2020 last year, there were three flagship stores of Uniqlo opened in Tokyo. One in Ginza, one in Yokohama, and the last one in Harajuku. These three flagship stores are all really different with different kinds of characteristics. The Uniqlo flagship store in Yokohama is called Uniqlo Park and it's at Bayside. It incorporates a sloping rooftop park and which embodies the life where goal of being an integral part of people's daily lives. It's really interactive. You can see children playing the slides and working up and down. This actually demonstrates a new aspect of retailing. And when we observe the store of Unikuro Harajuku, it's more digital oriented. Firstly, I would like to introduce an app called Style Hint. It's launched by Fast Retailing and it's a style app combining Unikuro and GU for different users to build up a community, a style community, for them to share their styles with within these different brands so that all users can be informed about the mix and match of their products. And so from the store, you can see the display of 240 different kinds of styles on the wall. And then you can also use a pen to touch the screen to see the products from the style. It's also an interactive activity for consumers to use. And so based on these three reasons, which build up the success for fast retailing. I think it's also a future trend for all the retailers or fashion brand, fast fashion brand to follow because it's very important to create the synergy between e-commerce and stores so that the e-commerce will thrive and also the experience can be sustained in the stores. For instance, for us, we are always staying at home, especially in Europe, but in comparison to Asia, some of the countries are partly open, partly more with uh, strict restrictions. So for the consumers in Asia, they can buy online, pick it out the store, while in Europe, some countries, they can only shop online. So the most important part is to offer the convenience to the consumers. And so in order to accomplish these, it's very important to have the correct information. So I hope this episode, the case study, helps you understand why fast retailing becomes the most valuable fashion company around the world. And if you're also interested in about the annual reports or more information about fast retailing, I put all the reference link below. And so that's it for today. Please subscribe my channel Fashion Brief to have more fashion analysis and also like this video. See you soon.